everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio, and today's video is a little different than some of my others. I'd like to talk about the process that I go through in order to create some of these blocks. Now, the, the method that I'm going to show you is specific to my Melkos and the fact that I use Mighty Hoops. Um, this particular Mighty Hoop is the 16 by 14 or 14 by 16, however you want to look at it. Um, and I'm going to walk through the process, but I believe that the process itself is applicable across the board for any embroidery machine. So I'm first going to show you how I go about setting up the hoops, how I measure, how, what I do with fabric, um, the whole nine yards so that you can see the prep before I actually start stitching. So again, in this particular case, it is the 14 by 16 hoop. Um, I have a bunch of these blocks to stitch out. Um, this is a fairly decent sized block. It measures 13 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter as stitched out. And so I need to have a hoop size big enough to be able to accomplish this. Now, I want to also point out the uh, stabilizer that I'm using. Now I get my stabilizer from United Threads. This is their tearaway and this is their thinner. I believe it's 1.6 ounce rolls. And I have found by far that buying stabilizer by the roll is the absolute cheapest way to go. And frankly, I'm going to say that United Threads is one of the cheapest suppliers that I have found. And anybody can use it. You don't have to have a wholesale account. Um, so what I've done is I've taken my hoop um, and I've actually measuring, you know, how much distance I'm going to be able to get off of my stabilizer versus the hoop. So the width of this, and hang on, let me get my ruler and I'll show you. The width of this is... 20 inches. Okay. So if I lay this hoop out, um, the short width against the width, it fits great because I'll have enough room at the bottom and at the top to grab the stabilizer and, and, and tighten it. So I'm going to do roughly the same thing on either side. I'm going to leave myself about an inch and a half to two inches. And I'm just going to come over here and do the same and just again allow myself to cut a piece off that is the approximate width and length of this hoop. So I'd like to speak a little bit about the fabric that I use for doing all my fabric painting. And um, what you're seeing here is the end of the bolt. It is cotton sateen. And the beauty about this is that it comes in 118 inch wide. Um, I have been using this now for probably going on five, six years. And I have found it is a very consistent type of product. Now, for those of you who do not have a wholesale license, um, I suggest that you go to your local quilt shop. Um, you can take a snapshot, again, of the end of this bolt and ask them to stock this in their, it would probably be in their wide backing section in a quilt shop. They can order this from Checker Distributor or E.E. E. Shank Distributor. Now, I have bought from both companies. It's the same fabric um, and it's quite reasonable per yard. Now, of course, I'm going to leave that up to whatever each quilt store would mark up, but this is something that I feel like not only is a great kind of fabric for fabric painting, but frankly, it makes a fantastic backing. When you wash it, it becomes very soft and even though it's not something like minky, it still has a very smooth finish to it and really feels good up against the skin. Now, what I'm going to end up doing is whacking this up and cutting it into pieces that fit my hoops, 
but I did at least want to let everyone know just exactly what it was I was using for my painted fabric. So moving forward through the process, the next thing that I do with every single piece of fabric that I actually end up embroidering for my kits, I iron it thoroughly. And the very first thing I'm going to do is, is do a very decent coat of Best Press. Now, many of you probably already use this with your quilt blocks. Um, so I'm just going to say that it works great for getting a nice flat surface for embroidery. I find that this really helps not only for the stitching, but actually when you go to color on this, having this little bit of best press really helps smooth out the color and uh, makes it glide easier across the fabric. So this is super easy. I'm just going to coat it really good. You can see this is why I have all these wonderful old pieces of, of quilts that I have done. Okay, with that, um, and I apologize. I know that many of you probably think this is very uh, basic, but these days you'd be very surprised how many people don't know how to use an iron correctly. So what I've done is I've set my iron at the highest cotton setting. Now, this is a, I'll give you the brand. Oh, I really like this. I got this off of Amazon. I think I spent 60 bucks. Um, it's been a great little iron and it gets really nice and hot. It does have an automatic cutoff, but hey, it, so does every iron these days. So you've seen that I've, I've gotten my fabric saturated. Now I'm just going to come in and iron. And oops, now that will happen. Uh, my iron wasn't quite as hot as it should have been. So please make sure that your iron first is very, very hot. Sometimes also I rub it against the edge and really try to get any gunk that might be on there. So once again, we'll go back here and again, just work out as many of the wrinkles as possible. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can do this from either side. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, make sure that you do get the entire piece done, however. I just find that it makes it so much easier to put in the hoop once it's been nicely starched and ironed. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I end up loading my Mighty Hoops. The hoop that size that I'm using today is in fact, I'm just going to pull this out real quick so you can see it. You can see up here on the corner, it's the 14.79 by 15.81 Mighty Hoop, or what they refer to as the 14 by 16 inch Mighty Hoop. Now, the one thing you need to know about these Mighty Hoops, and I think some people don't because I didn't until I checked in with them. There are actually two different ends for each one. There's this kind of sharp point, um, smaller end, and then there's a long, skinnier end at this end. This one is always the top. And this one is always the bottom. Believe me, you will know the difference when you try to go put this on your machine, you'll get, um, uh, if you end up reversing these and putting this one at the top and the other one at the bottom, you'll get bad stitching. Um, take my word for it, it really does matter which end goes up. So I'll always put the skinnier end first and the short squatty one down here at the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to pull over my stabilizer first. And I'm just kind of lining it up. I'm making sure that it's, it sits pretty even across the bottom of the hoop. Then I'm going to bring in my fabric and square it up as well, making sure that it lays as flat as possible. Now here comes the fun part. And Mighty Hoop will warn you about this when you go to, to do this but you wanna keep your fingers out of the way because watch what happens when I bring these two close together. It makes that snapping sound and it snaps them together real quick. Now, I'm gonna point out real fast that of course I've, I've gotten this wrinkled, um, but you can actually recover this and you can do this several ways. I am going to flip mine over. Bear with me here. 
and you'll notice that the wrinkles down here. So a lot of times what I like to do is I like to pull from the back and I pull away. Let me get this so you can see this. I pull away from the hoop and try to get it as, 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 what can I say? Un, as taunt as possible. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm working it down. And I'm doing this deliberately because I really did want everyone to see what I go through to make sure that everything's perfectly taunt, at least with the backing first. We'll get to the fabric here in a minute. And then I will often pull up all the way around to make sure that all the wrinkles are worked out and all the excess is worked out. So you just keep pulling this. Now bear in mind, this is tear away. This is why, again, I, I always refer to the types of products that I like and use. Now you'll notice too, I have finally gotten all the wrinkles out. Again, I wanted to show you the worst case possible that if you can just work your backing from, or the stabilizer, from the back of the hoop, you can get it nice and taut first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull the hoop over. And I actually like to start here at the top and I first work my sides and I'm pulling the fabric as taut as I possibly can, trying to get as many of the wrinkles out in that direction. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is turn the hoop around and I start in the middle and I work out. Now, if your fabric has loose weave, you're going to wanna to be careful not to get it too skewed because um, you can pull it out of, um, you can stretch and skew the fabric if you pull it too taut. In my opinion, I have now got this perfect. I'm gonna lift this up and show you. It, it's got a tiny bit of give, but it is really nice and taut. Let me flip over the back one more time so that you can see it there. Again, nice and taut. There's no wrinkles. Everything's lying very nice and flat. Okay, the next step is to load it on the machine. So stay tuned. So we're going to continue on loading up the big hoop. And the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is once you have your software up, is choose the correct hoop. And in this case, it's the Mighty Hoop 16 by 14. So I'm gonna click on that. Now that's not the pattern that I choose to use. So I'm just gonna go over here open. Uh, let me go. It is a Christmas pattern, but it's one that is called um, Trio of Ornaments with Piano Key. That one right there. And I'm going to open it. Okay, great. Now notice that this is sitting kind of cattywampus. The very first thing that I need to do is get that centered. So I'm going to go up here and click the center and the machine says it's about to move and now it does. And you'll see that the, the pattern is now centered. Now let's actually go over to the machine itself. Oh, before I do, I do wanna make sure in this particular case that I have my tension set correctly. Now I'm stitching with cotton sateen and with a tearaway stabilizer. So um, the ActiFeed is set at four. That might be okay. I'm actually going to click on standard and I'm actually gonna take this down to three. Now it's debatable. Um, I'll actually watch how things stitch out to see how it's working. Um, but I'm going to start with three, and if the tension looks like it's off, I'll, I'll crank it up to four. You will want to pay attention to what the tension should be set for your own machine. This just happens to be for a Melco Bravo. Last but not least, I'm going to click on the color sequence. Now this is all going to be stitched out in black thread. Even though I have three different colors here, I don't really care. I know that my black thread is on spool number six, so I will click up. Actually, let me clear all. Now I'm going to click on six, hit apply. Since it is the only thread color that's chosen, it will stitch out all three colors in that single color. Now I'm gonna hit the okay button. Now, we've now got everything set up on the screen and we're ready to go, so now let's move over right here to the machine. So I'm going to get a better view so that you can see it. 
Now I've got the, the hoop kind of sitting there. Um, the very first thing I want to point out though, let me pull this out a little bit so that you can see it. The end that has that little notch should always be on the right. I believe this is universal for all machines, but you may want to check your own particular machine if you're using a Mighty Hoop. So I'm going to stick that back in between. Now these are special arms. These are the arms that are meant for the larger, wider hoops. Now I'm going to push this back, by the way, making sure that my fabric is tucked underneath the arm. And I'm gonna push until I hear the click. And I like to just kind of put, oh, there we go, we got both clicks. So both sides look good. I actually just kind of like to make sure that both of them are down tight and it looks like we're ready to go. So the machine is set up, the software is set up, and now all I'm going to do is hit the go button. Now, I'm not gonna continue beyond this. Watching a machine stitch out doesn't really make any point. The whole point of all of this was to walk through the setup process and you might be able to glean something for yourself on your own machine by watching a start to finish setup process. And with that, I'll start the machine. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me at the website below or leave a comment and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about my process.